I faced a, a deep, deep personal betrayal that I just did not think I was going to be able to get past. I, I, I faced slander and accusation and attack. And it was just like, I'm like, this is like, are you kidding me? Anyone ever been in a storm where you feel like this thing's going to take you out? It says that a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. Though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Now they were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time, you got those kind of friends in your life, you know, those people. <laughs> They're like just waiting. They write something really sweet on your Instagram, but you're like, I know you don't mean that. I know that you wish. They're like, just waiting, just waiting. But when they saw, Scripture says that, um, where am I? But when they, when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds. I want you to see how fickle human beings are. This is wonderful. Like they're waiting for him to die. Now they changed their minds and said that he was a God. <laughs> but nothing in between for humanity. You're either the devil or God. Okay, that's awesome. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It happened that fa the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery. And Paul visited him and prayed and putting his hands on him, healed him. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. There's a lot going on here. They also honoured us greatly. And when we were about to sail, they put us on, they put on board whatever we needed. And then Paul continues on his way to Rome. So we've got a lot going on here. Paul had always wanted to go to Rome because he knew that Rome was the epicenter of the world, that the gospel would go out to the whole world from Rome. So he'd always wanted to get to Rome, but it just didn't seem to open up for him. But then what happened was he was kept in Caesarea for two years and then he pled his case as a Roman citizen, I need to go to Rome. So basically they put him on a boat and he was in chains and he was a prisoner and he was put on a ship headed to Rome. Sometimes God's going to use things that you don't think He's going to use to get you to a place that you really want to go to. Now, He was in chains. Can you imagine what this would have been like? It, it just would have been horrific. Look, I don't even do like nice cruises very well. I freak out and I'm not in chains. And I went once because, you know, we've got an office in Greece and I went to go from one Greek island to the other on one of those ferries and there was a little bit of, um, you know, the waves were a little bit wavy because that's what waves are. They're wavy. And so, um, as my husband tells me all the time, he goes, this is what waves do, Christine. They wave. And I'm like, why can't this be perfectly still? Why can't this be like, and I'm, I'm freaking out. And if you, you know, you, you need to fly with me and come on boats with me. And you're like, I cannot believe she's a woman of faith. I'm like, I can take on the devil, but I hate turbulence. But anyway, so I, I don't do that well. And here we are. And so they put him on this boat and he's chained and it would be horrible. And then all of a sudden, Scripture tells us, and we'll, you know, I haven't got time to read it now, but go home and read chapter 27. And they end up in this storm, a horrendous storm. The Bible calls it a, a northeaster. And you, you really can't get a vibe for what this is like. This is like, anyone ever see the movie Perfect Storm? Probably not because you're all Christians or too young. And so for those of you that have... It's when certain things come together, there's got to be certain conditions. And if it all happens, you're going to get this perfect killer storm. Well, this was a perfect storm. This was a, a massive storm. Man, I get seasick, you know, just looking at the water, let alone being chained. And then what he would have had to have gone through, it was like the people were freaking out as they would have been. Paul had already warned them. He said, this is not going to be a very safe journey. And I don't think we should do this. But they didn't want to listen to Paul. They wanted to push on ahead. And so then the storm comes and they're freaking out. They're thinking that their lives are going to be lost. There's 276 men on this boat. An angel of the Lord appears to Paul and says, it's okay. The, the ship's going to get wrecked and everything's going to go overboard, but you are all going to be okay. All 276 of you. And I mean, it was a horrific storm. They had to cut off certain things. They had to throw things overboard. Everyone was terrified. It was like so, so, 
difficult. This is what's happening all the way through Acts uh, chapter verse 20, uh, chapter 27. Then we get to the end, the very last verse in 27, it makes me laugh. It says, and so it was that all were brought safely to land. They, they hit some rocks, the ship was shipwrecked, and so it was, Scripture says, they were all brought safely to land. Just, and so it was. You know, the Bible's very understated. It's like, you know, Mary was like pregnant and then it just says, and then she just brought forth a baby. I'm like, it's obvious that Luke wrote that and he's a man. It's just like, it's obvious you've never just brought forth a baby. Go knock yourself out, go to hospital and bring forth a baby. It's just like, like what? And well, the same Luke is writing the book of Acts. And so, you know, they're my, two of my favorite books of the Bible. And um, he's the same thing. It's like, and they just were brought forth safely to land. It's like, honey. They just like had this horrific, they should have trauma therapy for the next like 25 years because they were shipwrecked and they were in this massive storm and you're like, and they were all just brought safely to land. And then as if God doesn't want to reiterate it, in chapter 28, first words, it says, after we were brought safely through, then we learned the land was called Malta. After we were brought safely through. I mean, they had just gone through this terrible, terrible storm. Everyone thought they were gonna die. I mean, this thing was pretty, pretty full on. Then they get shipwrecked, lose everything. And about the most the Bible's got to say is after they were brought safely to land. It's just like you got, anyone ever get safely to land and you just go, I don't quite know how I got here. I have just been through the worst storm of my life. It feel, feels like every force of hell was brought against me. If it wasn't one thing, it was three. It was never nothing. There was always something going on. It was either my marriage or it was my kids or it was the marriage that I wish I had or it was my job or it was my boss or it was my staff. And you seem to get hit on every, every front. One minute, it's it's sickness. The next minute it's a relationship. The next minute it's finances. Anybody but me been through a storm in the last couple of years where you just think, I don't know where this has come. And you get here and you go, hang on a minute though, I'm here. There are people I loved, I lost. My mum passed away. My sister-in-law passed away. My brother-in-law passed away. My other sister-in-law passed away on Nick's side. We just had death, 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 death wherever we went. I faced a, a deep, deep personal betrayal that I just did not think I was going to be able to get past. I, I, I faced slander and accusation and attack. And it was just like, I'm like, this is like, are you kidding me? Anyone ever been in a storm where you feel like this thing's going to take you out? I, I, I don't even know how I'm going to survive. And, and Paul says, after that, we were just brought safely through. I want to remind someone today, God brought you safely through. I know you thought it was going to kill you. I know you thought it was going to take you out. I'm not denying the magnitude of the storm, but I'm saying your God is greater than any storm that you were through because having done all else, you are still here. You are still standing. You still survived. He brought you safely through. And you're spending all your time thinking about the storm and God's saying, would you, would you notice that I brought you safely through? I didn't say you wouldn't be seasick. Some of you vomited your way through. Some of you just like said a lot of things that you wish you hadn't have said, but, but you're still through. I wanna remind you, you're through. You're not in the storm anymore. And there comes a point where you've got to recognize I'm now on land. I'm, I'm no longer in that storm. God has brought me safely through. I'm going to stop talking about how turbulent the storm was, how terrible the storm was, how seasick I felt within the storm, how many times I threw up within the storm, all the things I vowed I would never do or do again in the storm. That time is finished. God has brought me safely through. I thought it was going to kill me, but I'm still here. I thought it was going to take me out, but I'm still alive. I'm still standing. God has brought you. You safely through. 